All right, so we are converting into functions, uh, target 4D, day one. Let's start with your learning goals. I can create a function given a table and create a function given a graph. So we're going to be creating our own functions when we're given information now. So let's start with creating a function. Every linear equation must have the following. Rate of change, y-intercept, which in some cases when you get into word problems might be your fixed cost, but we'll get into that later. And that's going to be in the form of this. So your rate of change is also known as your slope, okay, which is this. And your y-intercept is that. And it's, when you have a graph, it's exactly what it sounds like. It's where the graph crosses the y-axis. So let's start with writing a rule that fits the data in a table. Okay, so x values, y values are your f of x. Okay, steps for that. Find the rate of change, which is your m and find the y-intercept, which is your b. And it's going to be in this form, f of x equals mx plus b. So to identify the y-intercept from a table, all you have to do is look where x equals 0. Easy enough. There's x is 0. So your um, y-intercept would be your f of x value, so 3. So you find where x is 0, and then you just look for your f of x or your y value, which is 3. Simple enough. To identify the rate of change from a table, all you have to do is use this formula. Now, this right here means difference. Let me go ahead and put that back on pen. So this right here is the difference, okay? That symbol. Change in f, f of x, change in x. Okay, so it's just, in this case, you pick two points. So I picked 0, 3, and 2, 2. Now, whichever, it doesn't matter which one you use first, because we have a change in f of x, so we basically have a y value and another y value on top. So I'm going to use 3 first and do 3 minus 2. Now, since I use 3 first, I have to use the corresponding x value. So in this case, I have to do 0 minus 2. So you're always doing subtraction. Okay. Um, now, if you subtract a negative, just remember that that is actually addition. So 3 minus 2 is 1. 0 minus 2 is negative 1 ha is negative 2. So we move the negative sign from here up to here and just make it negative 1 half. Remember, if you have a negative sign on the top and the bottom, the negative signs cancel out, and it's actually positive. Okay, so if we have to write a rule that fits the data based on this table, again, start with finding where x equals 0. And which is right here, and that's going to be our B. We'll get back to that in a second. Um, we're going to find our rate of change. I'm going to use these two points and these two points. So I just did 7 minus 5 on top, which means on the bottom, I have to do 0 minus 3. Remember, keep the order the same, which is two positive 2 over negative 3. And then our y-intercept, again, remember I said it's wherever x equals 0, so there's 0, my y-intercept is 7, and all I have to do is put that back into the equation, or into our function, that f of x equals mx plus b. This is m, so that goes there. Notice I took that negative sign and I moved it out in front, and then it's a positive 7, so it goes there. If my b was negative, this would be minus whatever. So let's take a look at an example for you to do and write a rule that fits the data for this. So see if you can do this on your own before you go through and um, copy down what's on the screen. And I'm going to look for the slope. And I'm again going to choose these two points and these two points. So for my x values, I did negative 3 minus 0. For my y values, I did negative 7 minus negative 4. Remember what I said about subtracting a negative. Okay, that's actually negative 7 plus 4, which gives me negative 3. Negative 3 minus 0 is negative 3. And then we have two negatives here, so that's going to cancel out. And then 3 over 3 is the same as just 1. For our y-intercept, look for our x equals 0. And then just find the corresponding y value, which is that right there. So we have negative 4. So when we put this in, we have f of x equals 1x minus 4. Do you have to have the 1 there? No. You can put it there if you want, but just keep in mind that if this is 1, you may or may not have that 1 in front. It might just be x minus 4. Alright, now writing a rule that fits data in a graph. Steps for this. 
find the rate of change, find the y-intercept again, but we're going to add one, and that's going to be identify the type of function graph. So initially, you're really only going to see two types, but I'm going to show you the three primary types, which is linear, which of course, linear means if you take part of that word, is a line. So that's a nice line right there. Quadratic, that's got a U-shape to it. So U-shaped. Absolute value, V-shaped. And again, I have these silly little ways that I remember that. Absolute value, value starts with a V. I remember that's V-shaped. Quadratic, there's a U in there, so I remember that that's U-shaped. The parent functions for these are going to be linear is going to be in f of x equals mx plus b and remember the y and that are interchangeable quadratic would be f of x equals x squared absolute value is f of x equals the absolute value of x and the parent function would actually just be f of x equals x for this all right so, write a rule that fits the function graphed below. Well, if you take a look at the graph, remember your parent functions, it's a V-shaped graph, so it has absolute value. So this is what we're starting with, is this parent function, and then we're going to make changes based on how the graph is uh, modified or different from our parent function. Graph has been shifted up by 1. Okay, so it's been shifted up by 1. So that means what we're going to do is we're going to add that after the fact. So when it's shifted up or down, we tack it on after the absolute value of x. We don't have to worry about it being shifted left or right, but just so you know, if that happened, that would go inside the absolute value and that would be plus or minus with the x. Um, but again, nothing we're getting into just yet. So that's our answer right there. y equals the absolute value of x plus 1. If I shifted it down 2, say, then it would be y equals the absolute value of x minus 2. Pretty simple. The hardest part is just recognizing this part right here. Now, if we had to write a rule that fits the function below, again, remember your parent functions. This is a nice line, so it's a linear function, which is in the form y equals mx plus b or f of x. Since the graph has been shifted up, so just like with the other one, it's been shifted up, so that's going to be a plus 4. It's been shifted up 4. We add that after the x. And then now we've got this part right here, the uh, m that we need to figure out, because that's not just going up 1 over 1 anymore. Easiest way to do that, find two points. So I chose the one right on the y-intercept and then another one, which is so 0, 4, and 2, 5. So you need to be able to find those points on there and then set it up. Now I wrote this a little bit different just because you might be more familiar with this. So y2 minus y1, so I took my y values. I started with a 5 minus 4. So since I started with 5, I have to start with 2. And then 2 minus 0. That equals 1 half. So my m is 1 half. All I have to do then is put them together and get x equals 1 half, or y equals 1 half x plus 4. This could also be written f of x equals 1 half x plus 4.